Hi, my name is Gail, and we're at Tony Robles' National Amateur Pool League Championship match. We have the Wildcats and Criminally Insane battling it out here at BBNR on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. First place prize will be $3,000 check as well as poison cues for every single person on the winning team. Second place prize will have to sell for a $2,000 check. We'd also like to congratulate our MVP female player of the season, Lenore Donovan, as well as our male player of the season, MVP, Oliver Ham. We're looking forward to some great matches and thank you for watching. The first match of the night would see the Wildcats' Rene Villalobos, an IT plus one, versus Criminally Insane's Mark Malari, a master player. Rene would get to the hill first before Mark Malari would battle back in the end, it was a hill hill thriller where Renee would close the deal three to four. Yes, I was 50% nervous and 50% very, very mad because of the way the road and, and bad luck and everything. So I really thought that they were asking me to take a break and I, and I was saying, no, I'm going to try to use this as a some way turn it around and make it work. Somewhere, somehow it's going to work. And thank God it did. Hill, hill battle. Hill, hill battle came back. Thank you guys. The second match of the night would find the Wildcats' Christine Deska versus Criminally Insane's Peter Sakas. Both players were rated Rookie 1. Each was battling it out to get to 2 first. Peter Sakas would be the unfortunate recipient of a premature 8-ball early in Rack 1, giving Christine a 1 to nothing lead. Christine would then make a killer out in Rack 2 to close the deal 2 to nothing. Miss Deska is in the house! And Christine Deska, Peter Sakas. Try and get a quick interview with Miss Christine Desca. And she's going to complain to me that she doesn't have makeup on. She's not ready to be on camera. Were you very nervous? Extremely nervous. I need beer to play pool. <laughs> I hear that your team has a uh, requirement of three beers before you're allowed to play. Is that true? Yes. My heart pounds so loud that I cannot even focus on anything that I'm doing. So therefore, a few beers helps to calm me down a little bit. So you had to win two racks. Peter unfortunately scratched on the, uh, or made the eight ball early. So the last rack you had to win all by yourself. Did you feel pretty confident? It was a little nerve wracking because of the few safeties that we had to play. Um, but it worked out and I managed to actually shoot half decent and make a few balls. So thank God. Very good. Well, congratulations. Down two to nothing, Criminally Insane threw up their grandmaster and MVP for the season, Howie Rubin, versus the Wildcats' Ariel Rivera, also a grandmaster. Earlier in the season, Howie would best Ariel Rivera, so this was going to be a very interesting match. Ariel and Howie would trade racks back and forth, with Ariel taking the lead 3-1. to one. In the end, however, Howie would battle back to take the match 6-4. to four. Well, how did you feel during the match? Because I know you were behind, if I'm not mistaken, three games to one. Yeah, I was down 2 nothing and 3-1, and uh, it's kind of tricky making balls on the table. I mean, you're playing a guy that plays on this table, so it's good to get out of the gate, get a lead on him. So down 2 nothing, down 3-1, you know, down 3-1, I got to win that game, down to make it 3-2, and fortunately I got a couple rolls, and I uh, made a couple good shots in that one rack to get a 3-3, and uh, fortunately I pulled it out. Well, I'm happy for you. You shot great, and good luck the rest of the way. Now with some momentum back in their court, Criminally Insane threw up their team captain, Jim Forrester, against Arturo Reyes, an advanced player of the Wildcats. Arturo would have to get to four before Jim got to three. Jim made some fantastic outs during this match, but unfortunately for him, Arturo would best him, winning the match four to two and clinching the win for the Wildcats in season one of the National Amateur Pool League. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony Robles, and I'm here with the winning team of the first season of the NAPL, the Wildcats. Congratulations, guys. How are you feeling? We're here at BB&R on 2nd Avenue between 89th and 90th. Renee, how do you feel about the victory? 
Well, all I have to say is that when I played my game, I was so nervous and so mad that some way, somehow, I turned it around and I got the W. Thank you, baby, Wildcats. My heart's still pounding, sir. <laughs> that, that shot I made over there, the 14, I don't even know how I did it. I was trying to get to make the shot, finally did it. I'm ecstatic. This is the greatest team going. I just want to say thank you to my cousin for bringing me onto this team. Uh, it's exciting. Um, my first tournament. Let's go Wildcats, baby! Just great having everybody around supporting each other throughout the whole match, so it's great. Congratulations to our team and then our opponents. Congratulations to them too. That was a very, very, very strong team. I, I, I think that probably the MVP of the night, uh, Christine Desca. Okay. And uh, Christine. MVP! 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 Yeah! So now I'm red. It's nice to be the only girl on the team, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so blessed to have such a wonderful team and what a great experience for me. My first time in a pool league and I just love my team. I'm so proud of us. How was your record? How was your record? Seven and three. <laughs> once again, thanks for tuning in. And once again, I welcome you, the champions of the NAPL season one, the Wildcats. Thank, thank you, Gail.